Hello you beautiful people. This video we're going to be talking about the hash method and we're going to scratch the surface of this. This can get pretty complex but essentially when we override the equals method it is best practice to deal with the hash method. And I say deal with it because there's two things we can do. We can create our own custom implementation for it or we can just say hey we're not going to have a hash method. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So first let's just talk about, let's take a step back and talk about what the hash method is used for. Well, it's for any of the hashing data structures, which includes sets and dictionaries. So let me show you an example of this. When we go in here and we create a set and let's say we pass in book and we'll also pass in book two. So we want a set of books. Well, we run this, look at this, unhashable type book. So what in the world? This is basically implying that anytime we put something in a set, it gets hashed, which is true. So if instead of books here, we just passed in hello and hi, well, these are two strings. These are hashable. And in this case, we don't get any errors. The same thing applies for the keys of dictionaries. So if I instead made this a dictionary where hello is the key and hi is the value, this is fine, we don't get any errors, and I'm gonna get rid of this print because it's annoying me. All right, so now we run this, we don't get any errors. But if instead for this, we tried to use a book, well heck, now it gives us an error. When it comes to the value part of a dictionary, you can use whatever you want. So I could keep a string on the left here and pass in a book on the right. And in that situation, we're totally fine, we're not getting any errors. That's because the value itself is not hashed, only the key is hashed. And we talked about sets and dictionaries before object-oriented programming, so if you're jumping in, you can back up to like video 50 something. That's where you'll get that. Another example of a type that is not hashable is a list. So let's say here we try to instead use square brackets. Well now, we're gonna get an unhashable type list. So you guys can now see where hash comes up. Now let's talk about what you actually do for it. Well, if you don't want your data structure to be used for hashing, then all you have to do is, well one, you don't have to do anything right away, but best practice is to actually put none for hash. So in that situation, you would just say underscore, underscore hash, underscore, underscore, and set it equal to none. This is kind of like explicitly telling people, hey, this class, is not supposed to be used for hashing. And when would you want to do this? Well, you would want to do this for mutable types. So if you're going to be working with this book and you're going to be updating its title and its number of pages, or if you had some other fields in there, maybe your progress or something like that, well, then you're not going to want to worry about hashing because you shouldn't hash mutable data. That's because typically the hash is derived from the data it's storing. So if you're updating the data, well then the hash can change, which is not good. Or if you're just really careful, you can use mutable data for hashing. You just shouldn't be changing it. So just don't change objects that are being used inside of a dictionary as keys or inside of a set. All right, but enough rambling. Let's just show you how you would implement hash if you wanted to. Now I got this solution from a book, Mastering Object-Oriented Python, so credit to them. But essentially what you do is you would override the hash method by saying def hash, pass in self, and in here you can actually just hash the individual components of the object and exclusive or them. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. What you do is you would say hash of self.title and then a capital six upward caret arrow thingy-majig, and then hash of self dot pages. Then all you have to do is put a return. All right, so that should be good. Now you could actually use this in a set. So we could say books, and we could add book one and book two here. And running it, we're not getting any errors. So let's just take a look at what these hashes would be. So we will print the hash of book, so that's the object we created here with are you my mother and 72 and running this and we get this number here. So what I wanna do now is I wanna change the data of book. So we'll say book title and set it to something else. 
and then I want to print the hash again. So it's gonna print it once, change it, and then print the hash of the book again. And running it, you can see we get two different numbers, and that's the problem. We don't want our hash to be changing, especially because the hash is used to derive an index location for these data structures. So all of that happens behind the scenes, but we should just not change the hash. Now, a couple of other rules for hashing. If two objects are considered equal based on this here, well, in that situation, they should have the same hash. So in other words, if we had two books, and let's say they had the same exact title and the same number of pages, we should be able to print to see if they are equal. And if they are equal, then their hashes should be the same. So if we pass these to hash, we should get the same value. All right, so let's clear this out and just see what we get. Running this, they're not equal because I did it wrong. All right, there we go. Let's add that question mark in there, run it now, and we get true, true. So the books are considered equal, the hashes are the same value. The other thing is if objects are different, they don't necessarily have to have different hashes, but generally that's a good thing. But if for some reason you have two objects that are not the same, but they have the same hash just by coincidence, that is okay. So again, just to summarize the rules real quick, hashes shouldn't change, an object's hash should remain the same for the entire execution of the code, and two, if two objects are considered equal, then their hashes should be the same. And third thing, a side note, if two objects are different, their hashes do not have to be different, although that is ideal. There's probably some other hashing rules out there, but those are the basis, and hopefully that was uh, helpful and not just a bunch of useless information. But stay tuned because we're going to continue our discussion on object-oriented programming.